Did you know that you're using ghouls wrong? If you're a dungeon master, chances are you're not actually playing ghouls right. Want to bet? Let's find out why. Ghouls in Dungeons and Dragons are undead, but they're not dumb. They actually have an intelligence stat of seven, and when they slash you with their claws, they have a chance to paralyze you. The thing is, is that I like to use ghouls where I combine both ghouls and zombies. You ever seen the zombies movies where the zombies are moving towards you at a slow pace? But then there's that one smart zombie that stands back, that one intelligent zombie where something is different. I like to use ghouls sometimes in that regards because ghouls are intelligent. They may even have a semblance of self-preservation. So if you damage a ghoul, chances are it may run away. If you're not having your ghouls attack and run, you're playing them wrong because the DC 10 basically paralyzation effect they have in their claws makes them so they can drop someone, get them to not function, and they would know when they're paralyzed, allowing the zombies to come from behind them or another undead to come from behind them. All the ghoul is trying to do is run through your group of people and paralyze them. Now, the thing is, is the DC 10 is a pretty easy DC that even a commoner can make. I would like to up that DC to probably a DC 13, especially because most of our player characters are going to have a pretty easy save at it. I would like a little fear in their eye when they become paralyzed. What I wouldn't do is have the ghoul continue to attack the paralyzed creature. I'd have it move on. They may be intelligent, but I don't think they're that intelligent. Or would you? How would you do it? If the ghoul paralyzed someone, would they then continue to attack them with advantage? How would you treat the ghoul? Are they smart enough to do that? Or do they attack what moves until it dies? It's an interesting tactics conversation or maybe even a lore conversation on how you would play ghouls. What are your thoughts? Be careful when you use ghouls. Their paralyze combined with multi-attack and good damage means the ghouls can dish out damage. Especially when someone becomes paralyzed, now the attacks happening against them happen on advantage. When ghouls come in more than just one, two, three, four, they become exponentially more difficult. If your character fails one of those checks, and then they fail that check the following turn, a ghoul can bring an entire party down to its knees in a matter of turns because of that paralyzing effect. A couple of bad rolls, and your whole party is now being attacked at advantage and cannot defend themselves. So be aware and be careful with overwhelming a low-level party with ghouls because they will get demolished. I've done it accidentally a time or two. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen ghouls? This should have been easy for a party, a couple of bad rolls, and bye-bye, she wrote. What are your thoughts on this? Ghouls may run away. The thing with ghouls is that they are semi-intelligent. So if zombies come up and ghouls come up and you're using combination, or you're just using a couple of ghouls, and the barbarian goes, whoop, and kills that ghoul, there's a chance the other ghouls will go, oh, shit, and run, because ghouls are not unintelligent. Now, do you make that insatiable hunger override their desire for self-preservation or are your ghouls really that hungry that even though they're intelligent they will continue to attack what is the level of what your ghouls intelligence is it more cunning intelligence with a desire to eat anything and that desire to eat anything living causes them to force for when they drop someone do they consider start to eat them or do they move on to the next living thing where does that level of intelligence fall for you I think that leaves a lot up for debate and a lot of room for lore and background and how your ghouls respond. The bottom line is, though, a zombie is a shambling mound of unintelligent mass which just wants to eat. The ghoul is the same thing, but at a level of intelligence and also put a little bit of paralyzed and some more damage in there. What do you think? How do you view ghouls differently from ghouls to zombies when it comes to the intelligence side of it? Ghouls have low perception. They do. In fact, it may be something interesting to a party to stumble upon ghouls if they're sneaking through an area eating a corpse. Well, maybe a fresh corpse. Or maybe they stumble upon ghouls just standing in a corner, staring at a wall. Kind of like you found in uh, I Am Legend. Uh, remember when they were like this? Yep. That right there would be terrifying to see. But how would you do that? With that low perception, it really allows for the ghouls not to see the players coming. How would the players handle it? Do you allow them to then stealth away? Or do you make them step on a twig? Or do you use the dice and let the dice tell the tale there? Me? I'm letting the dice tell the tale on that one. But question is, how many ghouls do you put in front of them? 
Do you make it a difficult and challenging? Do you put one or two? The ghouls are also intelligent. When one ghoul sees a party of four adventurers, do they attack or does it run away to get reinforcements? How would you do this knowing the ghouls have an intelligence of seven or do they attack blindly? How would you use this low perception as a storytelling device with ghouls in your campaign? So guys, that sums up ghouls. Ghouls are intelligence. Would you use that for an intelligence of cunning or would you make it so they have a life preservation, meaning they're willing to run away? Would you mix ghouls and zombies together? Zombies being the trudging mass of unintelligence with it just attacks blindly anything that's living where the ghouls sit back and watch, slowly picking off and finding out who they can drag away. How would you use ghouls knowing and thinking that ghouls have a seven intelligence, but are have an insatiable hunger for the living? Are ghouls truly undead or were they living that took aspect in cannibalism? Or is it someone that was so desperate they ate necrotic flesh of a zombie and then turned into a ghoul? How does ghouls spread in your campaign? I said ghouls, you're using them wrong, but the idea is that ghouls are not just an undead creature. Because they have intelligence and because they have an unsuccessful hunger for the living, there's lots of ways this can be interpreted. And the thing is, I love the idea that ghouls is a word that can mean so much for you. It doesn't have to be Forgotten Realms lore. In fact, ghouls could be a tribe of cannibals that are simply undead because they've been eating necrotic flesh for so long and they've gained immortality. Or are ghouls immortal in your world? Or do they age as well? Do they have a higher metabolism and you can find starving ghouls that can barely move? How would you use ghoul differently than what you would stereotypically see? I'm curious. And as always, thank you very much for joining us. Like, subscribe, hit the button below that says notification, comment, tell us what you'd like to see. And as always, we thank you so much for supporting this channel and we hope to bring so much more to you and we'll see you next time.